we extended our broadcast time on our Facebook Live this morning uh, because uh, we're going to talk about a subject that we uh, first broke the news story of two days ago. Uh, uh, and uh, in a matter of 24 to 36 hours, we have received some clarity on the story about the possibility of Sharon Health Care Center uh, being turned into a, a COVID-19 receptacle for senior citizens. Uh, that story broke, first of all, in the Connecticut Mirror. Uh, then we got information on it. Uh, Brent Colley and Maria Horn went to work on it immediately. And uh, our guest this morning uh, is Maria Horn, because Brent Colley said, you know what, Maria did most of the legwork. Why don't you speak to her about this? So we're going to bring Maria Horn on. Maria, a good morning. Thanks again for joining again this morning. Good morning, Marshall. I'm glad to be with you this morning. You know, I think I think what we break this down to is we'll start it off as it, when when you live uh, small town politics or local politics, um, really when when things like this happen, doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican, you're representing your 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 constituency. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the what happened with Brent and you and with the state of Connecticut, because this idea did come from the state uh, to move people that had COVID-19 that were senior citizens into a couple of facilities. Uh, okay. So so let's break down uh how you got involved with Brent and, and, and how the steps went to where it looks like we stand now, but you said this was very fluid to me the other day, where, yes. where Sharon won't be receiving uh, any of those, uh, those COVID-19 people. Yeah, so, well, I, I would say what's interesting is that it, it um, uh, Brent and I, I think we're getting inform- it's probably the same information, but on parallel tracks. And, and the thing is that our instinct, both of us, was to immediately communicate with one another. I had a conversation I heard from a, an employee there about um, plans to take on uh, COVID-positive patients and concerns about whether they were adequately staffed, whether they had adequate PPE. Um, and then I, you know, went, you know, you, I spoke to the commissioner of the Department of Social Services. I spoke to uh, other leaders in my um, legisl- in the legislature, uh, I spoke to you know I, I spoke to basically all the stakeholders, and then I called Brent and said, "This is what I know. You need to know what I know." And he added into it what he knew, and um, and 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 got a lot of you know got people motivated, but but also I mean I think we were sort of op- you know different ways of operating, but in constant communication. So my focus was on you know do in the conversations that are happening. Because this isn't, to be clear, this isn't a coercive thing at the no. state, from the state at, some, at this point, at least. I, I'm going to emphasize at some point here the urgency of this situation and, and push back on the notion that we do have COVID in our community right. and we have um, COVID-positive patients at Sharon Healthcare and we have a number of presumptive COVID-positives at Sharon Hospital. So there is no, this isn't a moment of we've kept it out of our yeah. community. It is here and we must be responsible in the way that we address it to protect, you know, the citizens of this region and, and the state, and in particular, a fragile population at nursing homes. So my concern was hearing confidentially from people there, are they adequately sta- supplied? And when I raised those concerns, I am happy to say that the state agencies involved uh, put a variety of, of holds on. First, it was sort of a momentary pause uh, until they could have conversations. And then, as of yesterday, we were told that they, they were, it was on hold. Um, that from, uh, <laughs> I spoke to all the various stakeholders. Everybody's very careful about their words. And, uh, and, and again, as you just noticed, this is a fluid and urgent situation. But um, for a variety of reasons, uh, I think they decided that for now, at least, uh, Sharon Healthcare is, is not uh, prepared to, to do this. Um, so well, well, you know, uh, this, this is ur- an urgent situation, and, and you know, the, the, pl- the plan overall, to this, so in this population, nursing home patients, we have, and this, these numbers, people are always reluctant to give these numbers because they change moment to moment. As of yesterday afternoon, there were 150 COVID positive nursing home residents in the state of Connecticut at 57 different nursing homes. That is changing fast, and, and we owe them uh, a, a plan to protect them. And so there's a, you know, the first plan, of course, is to isolate them within their um, existing homes, and, and that is what uh, they, are, they have been doing responsibly and well at Sharon Healthcare. They do have two COVID-positive patients there. Um, 
And then the second plan for some some facilities can't do that, can't manage it uh, for the safety of the non the you know the the non negative sorry non positive population and for the people who are infected. So that is what you know is creating this idea of alternative sites, and some of those are are new sites. I use that in air quotes. They're field hospitals, in which case they are new, but others are you know the possibility of opening up uh, old uh, nursing homes that have been closed recently. Um, and and that's a plan that many of us have supported, but we do understand that that takes uh, re- resources that, that, that are in short supply, and one of those resources is time um, because it takes time to build those facilities. And so the, the idea of creating, you know, COVID-positive facilities who, who voluntarily try to do that is a sound one, and, and those facilities that try to do it and, and are properly resourced and supported – you know, are are heroic. They are doing a huge public service. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Uh, but but they do have to. We do have to make sure they are adequately supplied, adequately staffed, um, and have backup systems that that can can support them. You know, what's interesting when the story first broke, and I, I, I and we talked about it on the air, and we went online with it, and we gave a number that, that was given immediately by the state to call in if people had concerns. I One of the first pieces of information I said is be calm, be polite. Uh, this, is, this is just an idea that is being set up because, you know, we look at the country, and we're now approaching between 1,000 and 2,000 deaths a day, and it's going up yeah. almost – almost 33% a day, and sooner or later until we reach that peak where it starts to go down, uh, the most vulnerable are going to be the ones that need the most care. So sooner or later, somewhere in the state of Connecticut, there's going to have to be a place that deals with senior citizens that are in nursing homes that happen to get COVID-19. Uh, and I think what people, maybe maybe I'm reading this wrong. You can tell me if I'm reading it wrong or right. The idea was put out uh, by the governor and the, by the state of Connecticut a, a, as an idea. And obviously, it's going to be a plan that is changing daily and, and and coming together daily on an as needed basis. That that is correct. And and one other thing that I, I did extract a I'm gonna have to <laughs> make sure this happens, but a commitment about community um conversation, local conversation, um uh, uh communication about what this is happening because one of the problems here and I know this was much to the frustration of, of Sharon Healthcare um and their parent company was that this sort of came out, you know, ahead of them being able to have any communication uh, with the community. It just was not handled in, in an appropriate way. And, uh, you know, for all kinds of understandable, urgent reasons, people, you know, got information and, and ran with it. But I, it is my hope, and I'm going to keep making calls to DPH and DSS pretty much every day to check in on this, but that we do have, because people need to understand this this. But, you know, specifics of what's happening, um, the preparations that are being made. You know, people need a chance to to ask questions and to understand both the realities and the and the safety measures that are being taken. So I'm hoping that that will be part of any any picture going forward. You know, it's funny when I spoke to Brent about uh, about the Connecticut Mirror article, uh, the reason I decided to go with it is the Connecticut Mirror did contact somebody from the healthcare agency that owns nursing homes that did make that quote. And what really amazed uh, both Brent and I at that time was, geez, wouldn't you think they would speak to the at least the first electman and the representative in the area? I, yeah, <laughs> I had that too. I mean, hello. <laughs> I mean, I found out about it, yeah, from a, an employee who, yeah. who uh, reached out. Yeah. So, so. That, that I think that was the thing, and you're right. Uh, sometimes in these situations, uh, communication channels get, get really mixed up, and, and, uh, and the public really is left in the lurch here. But so as it stands right now in this, as we said, this COVID uh, – pandemic is an ever-changing fluid situation for everybody but as of right now sharon healthcare center is not really on a list it is off the list for now uh, but that will really obviously depend on how serious it gets in, in the state of connecticut with senior citizens i would think i think that's that's correct well said 
Well, Maria, uh, and this is a hell of a time to be a state representative. Uh, uh, congratulations uh, for getting involved in this and for, for getting some action done on it. And I'm sure this is only the first of uh, what we're going to find as many speed bumps that you and Brent and all the uh, first selectmen in our area and also the, uh, the people in New York State and Massachusetts are going to deal with over the next uh, three to five weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a constant. And you have to, I mean, what's important and is the way that the legislature in particular is functioning now is it's very grassroots. And, and it's checking in with what's happening in various places and making sure you understand the details and communicating them up the chain. And, and then also com- obviously communicating, you know, information that I learn uh, from the state out to the citizens. And so that's really what it's about. Well, once again, Maria, thanks for coming on. Thanks for uh, Thank you, Marshall, getting involved. for all you're doing. And, uh, and we'll obviously be speaking to you again probably pretty yes. soon. <laughs> Take care, Maria, and stay safe. Thank you. Same to you. All right, bye-bye. Uh, Maria Horn, our representative 64th District here in uh, Connecticut this morning here live on Robin Hood Radio uh, on the uh, Sharon Healthcare Center.